Hello, good morning everybody. As you can see, it's raining quite a bit, so I'm not gonna go outside on the bike, but I thought I would go ahead and show you guys my road bike. I bought this bike just over one year ago, and so far I've put about 1,100 kilometers on it. It is a Pinarello Galileo made from around 2000 to 2002, the best I can tell. The bike is a rather small frame at uh, 53 centimeters. Let's take a look at what probably stands out the most which is the front chain ring setup. I had a bit of a problem with my front shifter, so I decided to try riding around in just the small chain ring. And to my surprise, it wasn't that bad. I could actually ride like that. So I decided to go ahead and remove both of my uh, middle and largest chain ring and just rely on the front 30 tooth chain ring. To do that, I needed to uh, make a couple custom spacers, as you can see right there and I needed to make a chain guard so that the uh, chain itself wouldn't come off of the uh, of the chain ring, of the 30 tooth chain ring. Now you might be thinking, well that's, there's two main problems you're probably imagining with this setup. Number one is, well the biggest is how, how fast can you go with 30 in the front and 11 in the back. It is a limiting factor, I gotta admit that, but it's not as bad as you might think. With this setup, I'm able to maintain almost maybe close to 35 kilometers an hour at just around 100 RPM. Now that said, I'm thinking about going with a bigger one in front, maybe a 32 or a 34 if I can find such a, or maybe I'll get a whole new crank set with a more modern bottom bracket. Who knows? But for what it is now, it's actually not that bad. And, be, and by the way, because I did change it to a one by, I went ahead and gutted the shifter internals to save a few grams. Pretty ugly, right? The second thing you may be thinking that's a problem with this setup is the chain line. And again, you're absolutely right. Uh, the chain line is not ideal. Uh, but that said, I've been riding for uh, about one year with it, about a uh, thousand kilometers I've taken, and I haven't really had any problems. It shifts perfectly. You don't hear any kind of sounds at any of the gears, so it seems to be okay. Uh, going along with the drivetrain, let's uh, take a look at what I have for pedals. That's probably not the most common pedal either. I'm using um, basically Shimano 520s, clipless uh, mountain bike pedals. These are actually the B-Twin brand. If you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I tend to use a lot of B-Twin products. And I simply got these because they were cheaper. Uh, going back on the drivetrain, I'm actually running kind of a mountain bike 9-speed uh, back here. It's uh, 11 to 32. So the cool thing about that is I actually have a bigger chain ring in the back here than I do in the front. So I have a 30 in the front and a 32 in the back. That allows me to go up uh, pretty much anything I want. Believe it or not though, there are still some limitations. Like the, there have been some grades that I can't maintain going up for too long. Uh, so I'm actually thinking about going with the 34 in the back. And that brings me to the next thing, the derailleur. Uh, prior to recently, I was actually using the short cage derailleur that came with the bike and was able to make it work with the 32, but I decided if I wanted to go to a bigger chain, uh, chain ring in the back, I would need to go ahead and get a mountain bike derailleur. So that's exactly what I did. I bought this one used at a used bike shop we have around here for like, I think 10, 10 Swiss francs or something like that. And for the bottom bracket, it's just a standard tapered bottom bracket that you would find on a lot of bikes at this uh, year. Now let's take a look at the saddle. This is a specialized saddle which just came with another mountain bike that I had. I don't think there's anything special about it. It's rather large and pretty comfortable. And the reason I have this is because when I bought the bike it came with this ugly yellow one and I just couldn't stand the looks of it so I had this one sitting around decided to throw it on. Seat post is I believe the factory carbon fiber Pinarello seat post and of course a Pinarello seat post clamp. And by the way, this bike has literally the word Pinarello written about 30 times on it, believe it or not. Mainly the components on this are Tiagra, Tiagra, however you say it. And um, that goes for the shifters, that goes for the shifters and the cranks. As well as the front and back brake calipers. As well as the hubs. The wheels themselves are Mavic Open Pros. Uh, these are not the tires that came with the bike when I bought it. Uh, up front I have these uh, Michelin Pro 3 Race Service Course tires. Um, these are not too expensive. I think I paid $25 a piece for these. Uh, these are 25 millimeter wide. 
and uh, actually I like them a lot. I do enjoy these tires a lot, much better than the uh, 20, or no, sorry, 19s or 18s that the bike had when I, when I bought it. Those I didn't like at all, <laughs> and they were totally dry rotted. So these were a huge improvement over those. Now I also bought the same set for the back. However, as you can see, I'm not sporting those. Reason why is because a 25 millimeter wide tire is actually too big for this bike. The main problem I had when I had that same tire from the front on the back is not that it actually hit the frame, but it was kicking up like sand and that was actually scratching the frame and I could actually hear it while I was riding. So I ended up going with these uh, Hutchinson Equinox 2 tires. These are 23s. I don't love them as much and they're already starting to kind of fall apart. I've noticed in several places the uh, this like string is coming off. It almost looks like it's cut a little bit. So what I'll probably do is when I think these are really no good anymore, I'll probably get the same Michelin Pro 3s except for in 23 size and put them on the back. For the fork, I believe it was a Pinarello branded carbon fiber fork. Looking up at the handlebars, they have a mutant stem, which I don't think is uh, from, I don't think that's factory. I think that was added on at some point later, not by me, but somebody else. I do like the look of it. The only problem is because of its uh, non, you know, normal shape, you can't really fit any kind of accessories onto that. As far as the handlebar goes, I don't know this brand, Morphe brand. It's a rather narrow handlebar at only about 42 centimeters wide as I measured it. Um, but I actually like that. I, I like it a lot. I have uh, one single water bottle cage as well as my tire pump. After 18 or so years, this paint is looking pretty rough. A lot of the uh, Pinarello decaling is really wearing off. Oh, and by the way, the weight of this bike is just over 9 kilograms with the pedals attached. Overall, I like the bike a lot, and I don't think I'm going to replace it for 2019. I'm going to keep riding this in 2019. I may mess with it, I may change the gears a little bit here and there, but that's just what I like to do. Is if you, if you can't tell, I like to tinker with stuff. Okay, well, that's about all I have to say about this bike. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments, and I'll try to answer them. Have a nice weekend, and a Merry Christmas. Bye, everybody.